Anyway, in Luke chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, it reads, Just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you an orderly account that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. So if I were to tell you that I time traveled back to the time of Jesus and I discovered that Jesus did in fact not exist and that there was nobody named Jesus that started the Christian cult, would you then have to believe me? Because I am providing this to you to give you an orderly account of things that I have perfect knowledge of and that I'm completely certain of because I was the eyewitness to not see Jesus. Are you going to believe me then? Or could I just be bullshitting you about that? The same thing goes with Luke here. I don't understand why you just inherently trust him that he is being truthful when he says that he has researched these things or whatever, that he has perfect knowledge or that he is completely certain about these events that he's about to tell you about. I don't understand how you can think that, especially when Luke copies a good bit of both Matthew and Mark and not just like somewhat seems like he's copying them. On occasion, they're verbatim copies of Matthew and Mark. That's because Luke's gospel wasn't written until 93 AD, at least. And by that time, both Matthew and Mark had been in circulation. John's gospel copies all of the synoptic gospels. And then, of course, Matthew copies Mark. So they're all copied off of Mark, essentially. How am I supposed to reconcile that with your idea that Luke is being truthful, or the author of Luke, is being truthful at the very beginning of his gospel? Also... I would love for you to point out a verse like in the text that says that Luke wrote that gospel, because at the very beginning, he's speaking ambiguously about himself, not giving himself a name. You're just assuming that it was Luke. But in fact, the gospel taken at face value without the title does not indicate who the author was. This is in stark contrast to other biographies that we find in the first century, because the other biographies, you can name any of them. The, uh, biographies of real historical people. You can name any any other historical person that has a biography about him, and they all have the authors claiming authorship at the very beginning of the book. Sadly, we don't see that for the gospel. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, says in his book, For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we were made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty, quoting 2 Peter 1.16. So 2 Peter was not written by Peter, or Kephas as he's known to Paul. He did not write this. This is a forgery in Peter's name. Much like how other people forged Paul's name and some of those got worked in as Paul's epistles, 2 Peter is a different author even from 1 Peter, and neither of those fucks were the actual Peter. In fact, this verse, 2 Peter 1.16, is evidence that there were people that were claiming that this whole Jesus thing was just a cleverly devised myth. And so somebody had to forge a direct encounter with the physical, historical Jesus in order to dispel this notion that Jesus was just some mythical person. So this works against your argument in this video. I don't know why you would put it in here. Well, what's the point? The accounts they are making are based on eyewitnesses. This isn't some secondhand source. What we are reading came from people who witnessed and saw Jesus Christ. It proclaims certainty. Even No, these people were not eyewitnesses. Uh, not even Paul was an eyewitness. Paul never witnessed Jesus walking on earth. He never gives an account of, P of Jesus's ministry, uh, anything that he did while he was on earth. None of that. And the gospel writers being removed from Jesus's death by at least 30, 40 years, none of them were eyewitnesses either. Uh, one damning fact uh, of this is the fact that the Gospels don't cite any historical sources. You know what sources they do cite? Scriptures. And the Scriptures would be the Septuagint at this time. These are things that are written way before Jesus would have been born. The Gospels and Paul are completely separated from any real history. These simply cannot have been eyewitness accounts. 
So you're just wrong about that. And Peter says, this isn't a fairy tale. This isn't a fantasy. Second Peter 3.16 states that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So pretty much all, all scripture is inspired or breathed by God. Again, just like before with the introduction to Luke's gospel, you have some fuck, we don't know who, to Timothy as part of the pastoral epistles of Paul. These were not written by Paul. These were not written by eyewitnesses. These were forged in Paul's name. But again, you're suffering from the problem that this person claims a thing, therefore that means this thing is true. And the thing that they're claiming is that God inspired or breathed everything in the Bible. And then you continue to double down on it in your next little section, talking about how this is definite proof that God inspired or breathed the entire Bible. Just because it's written down does not mean that it's true. Where is the evidence that it's true? Where is the evidence? Because coming from an outside perspective, all we have is some anonymous fuck that is saying, oh, hey, guys, listen, um, yeah, uh, God totally inspired the entire Bible. Uh, it's made available to you to fuck people over and tell them how shitty they are. So go on ahead and do that because God said it. I just have some anonymous fuck that is telling me that this is true without actually proving that this is true. <laughs> You know, in the Daily Bible podcast, I actually came up with a really great way to determine if somebody was speaking on behalf of God or inspired by God in some fashion. And that's to have light shoot out of their eyes and out of their asshole. That would definitely prove that they were being inspired by God or they were talking for God or something like that. Because that's one of the basic problems in the Old Testament, uh, especially in Ezekiel and, and some of these other books about the prophets where uh, apparently people were just going around saying that they were prophets of God. And there was no way for anybody to determine whether or not they were really a prophet of God. You had one fuck saying he's a prophet. Another fuck was saying, don't listen to that fuck because he's not a prophet. And uh, an easy solution, have light shine out of every orifice. I mean, I think that that's a reasonable thing to do for God. He created the entire universe. He can make light shine out of my ass. And can be used to correct us and help us live awesome lives. 2 Peter 1.21 states, Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So what does this mean? So what does this mean? It means that somebody wrote down a bullshit statement in order to sell you an idea. I mean, this is just shit written down in a book that claims that it's true. Like, the book itself claims that it's true. You're not proving that it's true at all. You're just simply restating shit the Bible says. If... For the Bible tells me so is your argument for all of this, then you really have no argument.